Uh, a short while ago, we had uh, on our program here from Newsweek, Josh Hammer. He stopped by, and, and during our conversation, uh, he raised a, a detail that up until that point I had been unaware of, which is uh, a former Trump attorney by the name of John Eastman, who was giving Donald Trump legal advice uh, in the wake of the 2020 election. Um, well, Eastman has uh, come in for uh, a lot of uh, scrutiny and attacks by the American left. They want to destroy this guy for giving uh, Trump any legal advice whatsoever. And uh, there's been uh, all sorts of efforts to disbar him and hurt him uh, across the country. And apparently also efforts to debank him, to remove his uh, status as a, an account holder at several banks. Uh, Josh Hammer raised this and, and two banks stood out. He said Bank of America and USAA. That would be the bank that most of us think as the military bank for veterans and their families. Uh, and uh, that jarred me. So we began the process of reaching out, saying, what's going on here? Is this true? Uh, the woman who did the reporting on this story and now has the results from it is Reagan Reese. She's a White House correspondent for The Daily Caller, where I'm also an editor. And she joins us now. Reagan, thank you so much for your time. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Vince. Okay, so what did you find? You, you started, as I mentioned, Bank of America and USAA. So you began digging on this question. And what, what, was, what were the results of your, your request? Yeah, so I actually was able to get a hold of John Eastman and talk about this with him. And he explained to me that he was debanked uh, twice in the span of two months towards the end of 2023. Uh, first came from Bank of America, who he had, uh, you know, been using for 40 years, 40 plus years. Uh, and they, you know, one day all of a sudden decided to close his bank account in September 2023 with no reason. Uh, they sent him a letter. He provided me with that letter. Uh, it just said, hey, we're going to close your account, prepare uh, for that result. And then he called them and said, you know, kind of what's up with this? And we were able to obtain that recording, which is in the story, and it's yes. uh, the Bank of America robotic voice telling him, you know, it's our policy that we can't explain to you why we're closing our account. In fact, let me uh, let then, me play uh, this audio. I want people to hear yeah. it. We do have it here. This is the uh, Bank of America voicemail. John Eastman calling in for details, so what's going on with my account? And here's what he heard. If you have recently received a letter stating your account or accounts are being closed, the reason for this is that Bank of America made a business decision to close the account and or we have determined you're operating in a business type we have chosen not to service at Bank of America. It is a Bank of America policy that we do not provide any additional information regarding our decision to close an account and the decision to close the account will not be reconsidered. So it's final. We're closing your account. We're not telling you why. Chances are we don't want to do business with you. Goodbye. Yep. And then when, you know, you think maybe that's the end of it, he opens an account with USAA uh, because he's, um, you know, related to a veteran. And they then end up closing his account uh, at, towards the end of November. Uh, again, same thing with no explanation. Uh, he told me he inquired about it, didn't have a recording of the phone call and got basically the same response that he got from Bank of America. Uh, so here he is with, you know, no response from both of these banks. I was able to engage with Bank of America about this, and uh, we gave them two days to kind of dig up some details on this. I figured this was a topic that they would maybe need to investigate a little bit on. Uh, they said immediately, hey, we'll get back to you with something. And then about an hour uh, before that deadline, uh, I got on the phone with one of their people from their comms department and they told me, you know, actually we don't comment on clientele matters. And then USAA just never responded to me at all. I followed up with them uh, three times and never got a response. So they had no interest in getting back to you or, or apparently had considered whether or not they'd respond to you and they just decided to ignore you. They thought that was the, the best course of action here. Yeah. I mean, that, is how it appears and that appears is what they did to Eastman as well and he was you know the account holder of two accounts and he's been trying to get answers and he's got nothing else literally just that voicemail from from uh, Bank of America and that letter from USAA and that's all he knows so no one has outright declared to him that this was a political hit but what does he suspect 
Yeah, I mean, he was 99% confident uh, when I talked to him on the phone that this was because of politics. And I think that's uh, understandable given how much he has uh, endured since he gave Trump legal advice in the 2020 in wake of the 2020 election. Uh, you know, now they're moving to try to debar him in California. He's lost jobs and, you know, fellowships over uh, the advice that he gave. So this just seems to him to be this, you know, another bump in the road, another uh, example of the political persecution. It, it's, uh, it really is amazing. This is not the first time Bank of America has done uh, this before uh, in, in their case. USAA was the one that surprised me. I didn't realize that if they're getting involved here politically, which it appears that they are, uh, that was the first time I had heard any indication of that. I, I say this as uh, someone who's a military brat who for some time had USAA insurance myself. Uh, so I was very familiar with the company. And by the way, previously very happy with it. So troubled to hear their name raised in the news in this way. Uh, and uh, and so what are officials, people who, who study this for a living saying? Are state attorneys general responding to all of this? Yeah, I mean, there was, uh, you know, right before my story posted, actually, there was a coalition of about 11 GOP uh, state attorney generals who petitioned to Bank of America and kind of called them out on their debanking tendencies. But uh, I talked to some experts on the debanking, one from the Foundation of Government Accountability, who really had been sounding the alarm on this trend uh, and just how concerning and how, um, you know, it can really chill free speech for Americans because what they're seeing from banking institutions is that they are closing accounts without any indication. And when uh, sometimes if you press, there have been individuals or groups who have been able to uh, maybe get a response that it had been some sort of political uh, closing of the account. Uh, but if you're being told, if you have your account, your access to your finances is being closed without reason and then you suspect in just the slightest reason that it's because of uh, political leanings, you're totally going to be less likely to speak out about your political views yeah. or, you know, express that. And because a lot of these Americans have families to feed, they have bills to pay. And so this is what these ex experts uh, expressed to me, that they are very concerned about what these banks can do to Americans. Yeah, that you can be excluded from the financial institutions of our country because your politics aren't aren't correct. That, that you're that you're judged to uh, be you know a part of the wrong party. It's it's absurd. I mean, if, and, and of course, not only if a bank will banks like this make judgments about how you earn your money, presumably then they might turn around and make judgments about how you spend your money. Like if if you're spending money in the wrong places, maybe you don't get to hold an account here. This seems like a dangerous road to go down. Yeah, and I think it's. Uh, hasn't been really focused on a lot there. That's one thing both of these experts kind of pointed out to me is that, uh, you know, I asked if this was on the rise and they had felt like it had been going on and that people had not been shedding light on, you know, this new type of cancel culture that they were very familiar with other individuals who had been debanked uh, and the media hadn't reported it. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, Vince, is that I think the response to the story, uh, people who, like you pointed out, have been so surprised that USAA uh, pulled this on John Eastman. I went to their latest Twitter post from 24 hours ago, and there are 68 responses, and almost all of them are people freaking out uh, that they closed the account. I have received emails from people um, who have been very upset. Uh, and have been USAA account holders and have been upset to hear that Eastman's accounts were closed without any uh, reasoning. And so I think that speaks to uh, the nature that we don't really know about these debanking incidents yet and that it's, it's kind of been under the radar. Yeah, for sure. And we've been hearing quite a bit here from people who, who've been saying the same thing. And uh, and when, when Josh Hammer raised it on the air, he was sourcing it originally to John Eastman's family, who had written a column for The Blaze a few weeks ago, indicating that he had been debanked by both Bank of America and USAA. Uh, and uh, as soon as people started hearing that, they said, wait, is that real? Is that true? Uh, because people do make decisions about where they keep their money on the basis of things like that. If they feel like their politics and their lives are being attacked, they don't want to support companies that are doing that. And it's it's hard to blame them. 
Yeah, another thing that these experts pointed out to me is that they think uh, when banks are making these decisions to close the account, uh, they're doing it because they either think the client is high risk or they don't want to do business with them. But regardless, they say that there's no methodology behind this. There's no kind of reason that matches, you know, traditional indicators the way they would uh, give you your credit score or something like that. Uh, They're just making this off of non-financial factors about you as an individual. It's it's an amazing story. Reagan, thank you for digging into it. Lots of questions, and you produced uh, quite a few answers for us, so we really appreciate this. Uh, Reagan Reese, White House correspondent for The Daily Car. Thank you so much today.